A post-exercise recovery routine is very important to keep your body feeling and moving well. Recently, Ben Johns, the number one pickleball player in the world, released his post-tournament recovery routine on YouTube. I was watching the video and read some of the comments and some people were asking, how can I do these at home on my own? In this video, I'm going to break down all of the exercises they did in his post-tournament recovery routine, but teach you how to do them on your own at home with no equipment. I'm also going to add in a few exercises for muscle groups that they may have missed in that recovery routine so you have a complete ready to go post exercise recovery routine that you can use every day to keep you feeling and playing well. Let's get started. So the first stretch that Ben gets started with is the hamstring stretch. Now the hamstrings are located in the back of the thigh, they cross the knee joint and attach up at the hip. We use our hamstrings a lot when decelerating when running and they can often be tight after exercise. I'm going to show you a seated version here because I think it's the most convenient. You can do it at the court, at home, anywhere you can just sit down. All you need to do is sit down, make one leg straight, you can keep the other leg bent and then you're going to slowly reach towards your toes until you feel a big stretch in the back of the thigh. Once you feel the stretch, hold it there and hold that for 30 seconds. You can perform that five times on one side and then switch five times on the other side. The second stretch that Ben does is hip distraction. As you can see, it's his leg it's being pulled on, kind of gapping the hip joint there. The way to do this at home would be pendular swings with your hip joint. So here in this video you can see I'm holding on to the fence. I would recommend holding on to something for your balance and you're going to let your hip free swing back and forth. So I start with anterior to posterior swings forward to back and then after I do some of those I'll switch and go across the body. The leg should feel like a free swing and a pendulum. You shouldn't feel like you're muscling too much into this movement. Just let the hip swing and move freely. The next stretch they do is hip external rotation. So for your external rotation, that is when the foot moves inward and the knees moving outward and the hip joint is rotating out. To do this, you can sit on the ground and get into this 90-90 position with your hips and legs. The front leg is the one you're going to be stretching into external rotation. I'd put both hands on the ground and then gently bow your chest forward towards the ground until you feel a nice strong stretch in that front hip. They then go on to make sure Ben's knees are moving well. You can see him doing knee flexion, bringing that knee all the way into a full bent position and also a little bit of tibial rotation, rotating the lower leg in and out to make sure that the tibia stays nice and mobile. They also do ankle mobility, mainly focusing on dorsiflexion or bending the ankle up. You can do that as I demonstrate here with your foot on a stool and kind of lunging the knee over the toes, which creates a nice bend and stretch for that ankle. Moving on to the front of the thighs, they perform this stretch lying on Ben's stomach as he pushes the heel towards Ben's butt. What you can do at home is do a standing quad stretch, or many people know it as the flamingo stretch. So you stand, you grab your ankle, and then you pull the heel to the butt. You should feel a nice strong stretch in the front of the thighs with this one. Some tips I have for you would be to keep the chest upright. A lot of people make the mistake of leaning forward to pull the leg more back. They then move on to do lumbar extension. You'll perform lumbar extension lying on your stomach and start by placing your hands on the ground about chest level. Then you're going to keep your hips down on the ground and Press your chest up until you feel some light pressure in the low back. Once you're there, hold that position 
Exhale your air and let your low back sink deeper into the ground. Once you breathe out all your air, you can return back to the ground at your starting position and then repeat the process. I would perform this lumbar extension 10 times and then move on to the next exercise. For the next exercise, they are doing his shoulders. So specifically, he starts with shoulder flexion, which is this overhead movement. All you're going to need is a wall where you put your pinky side of the hands on the wall, slide the hands up, and then you're going to bow your head and chest down between your arms. As you bow forward, you're going to feel a strong stretch in the top of the shoulder, maybe even a little bit of the lats stretching. You should hold this stretch for 30 seconds and perform five times. The next stretch they do is external rotation of the shoulder. This is very important, especially if you're hitting a lot of overhead hits. You need a lot of external rotation to get into that position. So all you're going to need is a wall, a door frame, a pole, but you're going to hold your hand on the pole and make sure the elbow locks in front of the hand. Then you're going to use the same bowing motion and bow until you feel a strong stretch in the front and top half of the shoulder. This stretch should also be performed five repetitions with 30 second holds. If you'd like more shoulder stretches, I will put the links to the shoulder stretching videos in the description. And the last stretch they do is for the neck. Kind of an upper trap stretch it looks like where he's holding the shoulder down and then rotating and stretching that back corner of the neck. So to perform this, you're going to need a chair to sit down on. One hand will grab the bottom of the chair. That is the side you want to stretch. Then you're going to rotate your head and drop the nose down towards the ground. And you should feel a strong stretch in the back corner of the neck. If you'd like a little extra stretch, you can use two fingers to grab the back of the head and gently pull the head downwards, adding a little more pressure to the stretch. Again, this stretch should be held for 10 seconds and performed five times. So that is all the stretches that Ben Johns went through in his post-tournament recovery routine. I hope you learned something. I hope that it was easy for you to understand and use the next time you get out there and play. But I also want to add a few stretches that I think they may have left out, some muscle groups that I commonly see getting tight in my patients and that I would highly recommend you stretch after you exercise. The first one is the adductor group or this inner thigh muscles. The inner thigh muscles go from the pelvis and attach down to the inner knee, the inside of the knee. To stretch that, you're going to hold on to something for support. It can be a table or a chair and you're going to spread your legs nice and wide. Then you're going to shift your weight over kind of into like a side lunge position. And as you shift that weight, you should feel a strong stretch in that straight extended leg. The other muscle group I want you to stretch are your calves. Running, jumping, we are using our calves a lot and they often get forgotten about, but they're really easy to stretch. All you're going to do is start on your hands and feet on the ground. You're going to then extend or straighten one of the legs as you try to push that heel down to the floor. You can put your opposite leg on top to give you a little extra pressure, but as you move the heel down towards the floor, you should feel a strong stretch in the back calf area. Now you have it, a full post-exercise recovery routine. I would do these every time after you exercise in order to keep the muscles loose, keep you feeling good, and help prevent injury.